Once upon a time, the glorious nation of Iran had a woman who won a medal at the Olympics. Since she competed for a Muslim nation and wore a hijab, she was thrown in our faces as proof that Islam doesn't oppress women. Instead, Islam empowers women so that they can achieve victory at the highest levels of competitive sports. Unfortunately for the men and women who used Iran's only female Olympic medalist to shield Islam from criticism, Kamiya Alizadeh has announced that she's leaving Iran because it oppresses women. CNN reports. Iran's sole female Olympic medalist, Kamiya Alizadeh, announced that she has permanently left her country for Europe. Let me start with a greeting, a farewell, or condolences, the 21-year-old wrote in an Instagram post explaining why she was defecting. I am one of the millions of oppressed women in Iran who they have been playing with for years. Ali Zadeh became the first Iranian woman to win an Olympic medal after claiming Taekwondo bronze in the 57-kilogram category during the 2016 Rio Olympics. Affectionately known in Iran as the Tsunami, Ali Zadeh announced she was leaving her birth country with searing criticism for the regime in Tehran. They took me wherever they wanted. I wore whatever they said. Every sentence they ordered me to say, I repeated. Whenever they saw fit, they exploited me, she wrote, adding that credit always went to those in charge. I wasn't important to them. None of us mattered to them. We were tools, Elisada goes on to say, explaining that while the regime celebrated her medals, it criticized the sport she had chosen. The virtue of a woman is not to stretch her legs. Reports of her defection first surfaced Thursday, with some Iranians suggesting she had left for the Netherlands. It's unclear from her post what specific country she's gone to. Muhammad told his followers that women are, by nature, stupid and immoral. Muhammad said that the majority of the inhabitants of hell are women. The Quran claims that the testimony of a woman is only half as reliable as the testimony of a man. The Quran says that men can beat their wives into submission, and we find in Sahih al-Bukhari that Muhammad allowed his followers to beat their wives until their skin turned green. Muhammad allowed his followers to rape their female captives and to hire prostitutes. Aisha, Muhammad's child bride, once said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. According to Aisha, who in Islam is called the mother of the faithful, Muslim women were treated worse than Jewish women, worse than Christian women, worse than pagan women. And this wasn't at some later point in Islamic history. This was during the time of Muhammad and because of the teachings of Muhammad. Fast forward 14 centuries and, shocker, the worst places in the world to be a woman are Muslim-majority countries. And yet, when we draw attention to the oppression of women in the Muslim world, we're told that the Muslim world doesn't oppress women. Just look at empowered, hijab-wearing women like Olympic medalist Kamiya Alizadeh. They're the proof that Islam promotes women's rights, not the oppression of women. And now we find that Kamiya was oppressed all along, and that as soon as she saw the opportunity, she decided to flee the Muslim world and head for the West. Pretty sad when the women who are being used to show that Islam doesn't oppress women turn around and admit that they're oppressed. I wonder how many young Iranian women who looked up to Kamiya Alizadeh as their hero and wanted to follow in her footsteps are now looking for a way to follow her footsteps out of Iran.